Australia's military history is more than just a collection of dates and the locations of war-ravaged battlefields. It is the stories of service and sacrifice of those who have answered the call of their country of birth or adoption and the enduring legacy they have created. Join me as we look into one of those stories. I'm your host, Ross Manuel, and welcome to I Was Only Doing My Job, Australia's Military History, a Doc Network podcast. Now let's get started. Leslie Charles Allen was born on the 9th of November, 1916 in Ballarat, Eastern Victoria. He was one of three children to Clarence Walter Allen and Ruby Ethel Nee Robertson. He had a sister, Violet Allen, and an older brother, William Clarence Allen. Leslie and Violet were sent to an orphanage at a young age following an upbringing marred by domestic violence brought on by the effects of the Great Depression. Sadly, very little is known about William before his untimely death from an accidental drowning in 1934. Due to his status, there is very little known about Leslie's upbringing or education, save that he and his sister would end up being fostered by his aunt, Mrs. Minnie Allen, who had four sons to herself, Percy, Herbert, Ronald, and Albert, all who, like Leslie, would go on to serve with their father, Mr. Herbert Leslie Allen, in the Second World War. Percy served in the Royal Australian Air Force, Herbert served in England with the Australian Imperial Force, Ronald served with the Australian Imperial Force in the Middle East, and Albert served with his father in the militia. From the age of 12, Leslie worked as a labourer, mostly on dairy farms around Ballarat to support his foster family and to pay for his sister's training as a nurse at Bethesda Hospital in Richmond, Victoria. He enlisted in the second raising of the Australian Imperial Force on the 19th of April 1940 at the age of 21. He gave his middle name as Clarence and his date of birth as the 9th of September 1918 and was assigned to D Company 2nd 5th Australian Infantry Battalion as a stretcher bearer before being sent to the Middle East. The second in second fifth was for clerical reasons to denote the unit as part of the second raising of the Australian Imperial Force, otherwise known as the second Australian Imperial Force, and also noted that it is not part of the permanent military force or part of the part-time citizens military force, otherwise known as the militia. At 180 centimetres tall with broad shoulders, he was, quote, physically imposing amongst the men of his company, but well-liked due to his wicked sense of humour and sporting abilities. In fact, the only people of the second fifth who probably had an issue with him were the officers, where he showed, quote, traditional laconism and disdain for authority. With his loud laugh and booming voice, colleagues in the company would report that you could hear him a mile off. Bull was thus one of the battalion's most recognisable and one of its most popular characters, unquote. He gained his nickname Bull while on the sporting pitch for charging down the opposition during battalion AFL matches like a bull in a china shop, which considering his stature would have been incredibly intimidating. That sportsman's prowess was easily transferred to the battlefield, when on the 10th 11th of July during the Syrian campaign during the battalion's attack on Calder in modern-day Lebanon, while under heavy shell fire, he worked through the night tending to the wounded men of his company, and then the following morning, even though fatigued, walked 10 kilometres to secure transport for them. This prowess, however, was finite, as he was admitted to the hospital for, quote, anxiety neurosis, something that we would now call post-traumatic stress disorder, around this time. He was, however, able to return to the battalion by the time the 2nd 5th was recalled to Ceylon, now Sri Lanka, in March 1942, before continuing to Australia in August that year for resupply and redeployment to Papua in October. On the 17th of December 1942, he contracted malaria, but was able to rejoin his unit on the 22nd for the defence of Wau in January-February 1943. It is in the defence of Wau that the legend of Bull Allen starts to appear. During the attack on Crystal Creek, where he was credited in papers for carrying a wounded Australian soldier 1,000 yards in a, quote, Superman effort, official accounts of the battle tell a slightly different but no less important feat of what became known as the Battle of the Slaughterhouse. On the 7th of February, D Company 2nd 5th was attacking a Japanese machine gun position near Crystal Creek, when a platoon led by Lieutenant Taylor was pinned down in the open. With three wounded and two killed, one of which was Lieutenant Taylor, Private Allen rushed out into the open and into the face of enemy machine gun fire. Pulling one of the wounded, Corporal Kelly over his shoulder in a fireman's carry, proceeded over 200 yards uphill to the company headquarters. While he himself was unwounded in his action, his uniform and haversack bore several bullet holes from the constant machine gun fire. On the following day, 18 platoon from the 2nd 5th was surrounded and ambushed by snipers. One member was killed and three more wounded, where Bull once again moved forward and making three separate trips, he was able to recover all three wounded men, two of which he dragged 30 yards to cover. 
During the course of these two engagements, Bull had been wounded four times, but none were severe enough to warrant him leaving his unit. For his actions in this battle, he was awarded the Military Medal and promoted to Corporal. His citation read, quote, Private Allen's bearing and his untiring efforts in tending the wounded and helping with rations and stores were an inspiration, unquote. Following Crystal Creek, he was admitted to hospital several times for exacerbation of malaria and spent most of 1943 in and out of hospital. Returning to his unit, he participated in the Battle of Mount Tambu in July 1943 as part of the larger Salamalau Lay campaign. On the 16th of July, Australia secured part of the southern slopes of Mount Tambu. In response, the Japanese commenced a counterattack that night, but it was repulsed by the Australians who suffered 39 casualties, including 14 killed. The Japanese would suffer heavy casualties with approximately 350 men wounded and killed in the eight attacks they attempted before dawn. On the 28th of July, American forces landed and the 1st Battalion, 162nd Infantry Regiment were pushed into the attack and replaced the Australian forces on the 30th. Australian mortar teams and stretcher bearers remained in the line to assist but did not actively participate. Owing to his experience in the jungle, Bull stayed on the line and this is where he becomes a folk hero. Like the Australians, the American forces failed to secure the summit and suffered 50 casualties to near constant Japanese sniper, mortar and machine gun fire in what historian David Dexter described as, quote, one of the most difficult and unpleasant areas to ever confront troops, unquote. The land around Mount Tambu was muddy, steep sloped and under constant Japanese attack, in which two US medics had been killed trying to bring the wounded to safely. Lance Copeland, a mortar operator who was present, said in a 2016 interview that Allen was the last stretcher bearer left to assist the 162nd. At this point, Allen, who was in the area as part of the residual Australian presence and probably exhibiting the same spirit he displayed in Calder and Crystal Creek, voluntarily entered the battle space alone and brought back a wounded American soldier, then went back for another, then another. Each time he went back for another rescue attempt, soldiers would make bets on whether or not he would return. Allen would complete this task several times, and while official reports would vary between 10 and 12 Americans rescued, accounts from the field report up to 17 American battle casualties were carried out into safety one by one on the back of a lone Australian from Ballarat, for he collapsed from exhaustion. When he recovered, he had to be physically restrained from re-entering the battlefield. His hat and uniform sleeves bore bullet holes from repeated machine gun grazes, but he himself was relatively unharmed during the battle. It is during this battle that the most known photo of Alan was taken. It shows a broad-shouldered Australian, steely eyes in it with a determined expression, carrying the helpless body of a by comparison diminutive American soldier over his shoulder. War correspondent Gordon Short took the iconic image during one of Allen's repeated trips back to friendly lines, though this particular American had been knocked unconscious by a mortar bomb. Bill Carty, a cameraman who accompanied Gordon Short, recalled a, quote, gigantic man striding up Mount Tambu like he was on a Sunday jaunt, unquote, describing Allen as, quote, a huge man with obvious physical and emotional strength, perhaps born from a difficult childhood, unquote. How definitely true he was. When the 2nd 5th was rotated back to Queensland in December 1943 for training, the effects of these Superman efforts started to rear their head. While he never showed fear on the battlefield, the war had clearly affected him. Allen went absent without leave for 11 days to the point where a warrant for his arrest had been issued, then cancelled when he rejoined the unit. As a punishment, he was docked 5 days pay. In January 1944, he had an altercation with an officer and was court-martialed before being demoted back to private. It was at this time that his health continued to deteriorate, with his malaria continuing to plague him and suffering from, quote, constitutional temperamental instability, another term for what we now consider post-traumatic distress, his military career came to an end and he was discharged as medically unfit on the 10th of September, 1944. The war, however, did not end for Alan right away, as he spent six months recuperating at an uncle's farm in Warrenheap, having lost the ability to speak. When he recovered, he met and married Jean Elizabeth Floyd, a former army nurse, on the 23rd of April, 1949. One of the well wishes to the happy couple would be Eleanor Roosevelt, wife of United States President Franklin Delano Roosevelt, and the two would continue to correspond until the First Lady's death in 1962. The Allens would have a daughter and three sons, with a daughter named in Eleanor's honour. This connection to the United States did not stop with the First Lady with Allen repeatedly offered roles to appear in movies in Hollywood depicting his actions and other historic deeds, all of which he would turn down. When news of his exploits started to reach the media, he met it with timidity. When asked, he would deflect attention to other Australian stretcher bearers or simply state, quote, I was only doing my job, unquote. 
However, only doing his job would earn him the United States Silver Star, the third highest medal for bravery in the United States system of awards, and the highest award that could be issued to a non-American. The citation read, quote, For gallantry in action on Mount Tambu, New Guinea, on the 30th of July, 1943, during an attack on the enemy in which his own unit was not engaged, Corporal Allen voluntarily advanced through heavy enemy machine gun fire to rescue American battle casualties. Without assistance, he carried them from the field to safety no less than 12 soldiers. He collapsed from exhaustion only after all the wounded men had been rescued. He himself was wounded during the action. Corporal Allen's gallantry evoked the unstinted praise of all who witnessed, unquote. In civilian life, Allen didn't talk about his exploits in New Guinea or North Africa, and his children had to find out about their father from others, particularly those he rescued. Following the war, Allen worked as a labourer and as a theatre orderly at the Ballarat Base Hospital. At home, he raised pigs and broke horses on an acreage outside the town, and in his later life, he would work at the recreation gold mining town of Sovereign Hill, where he would demonstrate how to use a horse-drawn Chilean mill used to crush quartz. Every Anzac Day, he would travel to Melbourne, where he would carry the banner of the 2nd 5th Australian Infantry Battalion. Alan's health would sadly continue to deteriorate and for the remainder of his life he'd be plagued by post-traumatic stress disorder and poor health in a life marred by infrequent bouts of violence. Private Leslie Charles Bull Allen, military medal, US Silver Star, would pass away on the 11th of May 1982 of a heart attack exacerbated by diabetes. To commemorate his service, Puckapunyal Army Base in Victoria renamed their mess facilities the Corporal L.C. Allen M.M. Canteen on the 8th of December 1979, making the first piece of army property named after someone who was not a Victoria Cross recipient. Now, for someone who did not seek glory or fame for simply doing his job, he was considered a homegrown hero by the people of Ballarat, who still fondly remember the tall, gentle giant. And on the 70th anniversary of the Battle of Mount Tambu, a documentary was released chronicling his service and called for him to be invested with the Victoria Cross for his actions on that day. Now, personally, I believe this claim is valid and has some merit, but then I also believe there are several other stretcher bearers throughout Australia's military history equally deserving of Australia's highest award for gallantry. Now, most people only know him by the photo taken by George Short, and even fewer know his story. However, that is not entirely true outside of Australia. In 2014, the Swedish heavy metal band Sabaton dedicated the Ballad of the Bull to Leslie's honour in their Heroes album, and on a state visit in 2019, the then sitting Prime Minister of Australia gave a bronze statue depiction of the famous photo to the serving United States President as an enduring symbol of Australia's and America's ongoing alliance. Now, I will admit, I did hear about Alan from Sabaton. And that, my friends, is the life, service, and legacy of Private Leslie Charles Bull Allen, Military Medal, US Silver Star. I hope you've enjoyed it, and I'll catch you next time, friends. Bye! Thanks for listening to the I Was Only Doing My Job Australia's Military History Podcast, a Doc Network production. This episode was recorded on the lands of the Gangdangara people whose elders have passed on knowledge for thousands of years, and we pay our respects to elders past, present, and emerging. This episode was written, researched, produced, directed, and audio engineered by me, Ross, with additional research done by Laurie Favell of My Silent Hero. If you do know someone whose story needs to be told, feel free to leave a comment on an episode or send us an email at IWasOnlyDoingMyJobPod at gmail.com. If you like what we do here and you want to support this podcast, the best thing you can do is share this with a friend or leave a review on your favorite podcast platform as it really helps others find the show. And if you want to join in on the conversation, join us over on Discord. And if you want more content, including show notes, photos, transcripts, and my various adventures finding memorials dotted around Australia, head over to our website at www.thedocnetwork.net and follow the show on all our social media pages at IWODMJ. Don't worry, there are links to everything in the show notes. Join me personally for more bite-sized history over on TikTok and pretty much everywhere else at Doc Winters. All opinions expressed in this episode are solely those of the speaker and do not reflect the views or opinions of any entity, agency, or organization. It is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial Sharealike 4.0 International License. Thanks for listening. Catch you next time. Bye.